Hi everyone, my name is Mathieu and I'll show you how I've made this Pokeball. So Ash told me that every 100 likes a Pokemon will evolve in the world, so please like this video if you liked it. If you always want to be up to date with new videos, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and hit that bell button as well to get notifications when new videos are being uploaded. If you want to support me, the best way is giving this video a like. So this has been a really long project I've been working on and I'll just, I'm not going to every detail, but I'll just show you how a project like this is made. So I spent over, I think 200 hours on uh, this first Pokeball. And uh, it's made out of real carbon fiber, so it's not fake, it's not hydro dipped or skinned with some uh, vinyl wrap. So this is how carbon fiber pieces are made, so it's just like a cloth, it goes into a mold. Then you have some peel ply and infusion mesh, everything goes under vacu vacuum. And then you get like a strong carbon fiber piece. So I went for full carbon fiber because I work with this material daily and I think it's like the best way to make a nice pokeball so it wouldn't be with a wrap uh, but this is just the real stuff so a vacuum bag is added on top and this will put some like pressure onto the carbon fiber making it into a strong and rigid piece once the epoxy is added so here you can see the vacuum is being pulled um, so this is done with the vacuum pump and everything is tied and sealed. So this has been a really long project because there are many techniques involved in this like process. I wouldn't say this is something everybody could do, uh, but at least like it might interest you how uh, stuff like this is done. So this is wood veneer. So this will be used for the stand where the Pokeball is standing on and it's reinforced with some fiberglass. So it's the same principle as doing like long boards and skateboards. Uh, where they use uh, multiple layers of veneer in the different orientations and then everything is pressed together but I'll be doing it with fiberglass and epoxy resin in between just to make like the the strongest uh, stand possible so this is just some regular laminating epoxy so I buy it from easy composites you can find it on their website I think I'll add the website in the description down below if you're interested so everything is mixed and then I just apply it with a generous coat of epoxy with a few layers of fiberglass in between so this will stiffen up to a strong and rigid part at the end so I just make sure to use a roller to um, like mix and disperse all the epoxy resin all over the part then everything is put into a vacuum bag uh, so here I'm just making a hole and this is the true uh, connector so uh, it fits through the bag and will suck out all the air and compress all the layers uh, strongly together so this is how I connect it again to the vacuum pump and you can see it's like a strong laminate being formed here uh, with less uh, air as possible in between. So once it's still in a rigid phase, so the epoxy is fluid uh, until it cures. And then I just wrap it around some like things I found around. So it's a cardboard, cardboard tube and then hold together with some clamps and wood just to make like the nice shape that I had in mind. So. The day after I'm ready to demold the entire part and this is how it looks like. So um, it's a strong band tube with a look of wood. So it's, it's a bit more warm to the touch than the raw carbon fiber or fiberglass that I normally use. And I think it's a cool effect. So if you like this, let me know in the comments below. Um, so here we're preparing the infusion resin. So if you're not familiar to my uh, YouTube channel, you can find more videos about the, like, the more uh, detailed uh, videos about what resin infusions are and how it's done. But it's just like pulling all the epoxy resin through the parts. And thanks to that, you get the best fiber to resin ratio as possible, like with pre prec uh, as well. So this is also how they make uh, Formula One cars or boats or, or very big parts uh, done with the same technique like I use here. So the first half came out. I already made the first half uh, before. So now I have two parts and that will be the base for um, 
the Pokeball. So the alignment will be matched to get the good result. So once it's cured, I just want to put an extra layer on top and I'm using the XCR resin. It's a top coat that flows very well over the part. So uh, it's sanded and then I add the coat. And here are some YouTube buttons I did that well at that moment. So uh, the carbon fiber YouTube buttons can be found on my channel as well if you're interested. So this is how it will cure and then you get like very close to making the pockable. Like at least that's what I was thinking at the moment, but a lot of uh, different processes went into making this. So then it's more about finding the right measurements for like the centerpiece because I have the two halves and now I have to match it with the centerpiece, uh, with the button where the uh, where Ash pushes on to get the Pokemon out of the Pokeball. So I'm just sanding all the way around uh, and cutting. I'm using a Dremel with um, a rotary blade on top and then I have the two halves. So you can see that the two halves are not a perfect circle and that's because there is still a part coming in between to form like the uh, entire circle. So I'm just making some cuts, uh, just taking my time just to get it very precise and accurate. And then I'm just using the permagrid uh, tools to go all the way through and make a nice circle. So here I'm just making three parts out of that one part that I made. So I have three stands for three Pokeballs. So I have two extra Pokeballs that I'll probably put online or uh, maybe sell or maybe give away. I don't know. Um, so here is the next part. So like I said, there are many techniques involved. So I'm using a 3D printer from a friend um, and he has a very good printer that is like very detailed and get good results out of. So uh, here is the printing. So it took, I think around two hours to print this piece. Um, would I have done it differently? Maybe. So I just did the entire ring now. It would have been easier to do the uh, closed Part. you'll see later on like now it's just like a bracelet with the button um, and could I have done it with some other techniques probably yes but I just wanted to use a 3d printer once and in, uh, in my tutorials I think it's a very cool effect just to see like how it's building uh, the material to the to the good piece so here we are removing the center ring so this is how it came out of the printer so I think it's like very good uh, as a finish for a 3D printer. And this was the first fit, so till now I didn't know if the 3D print would fit. So I was pretty happy to see that it fitted. And now I'm just going to fill it myself with some resin. So I'll be using some polyurethane resin to fill the cavity in between. So this is maybe what I would have done differently. I would maybe have printed a top and a bottom and a, a hollow surface in between, but it would be more difficult to print. So here is the fast cast polyurethane resin I'm using. So I'm using the P6. Uh, Easy Composite sells, I think, a range of five different polyurethanes with different stiffnesses and flexibilities into it. So this one is good because it cures quite rapidly. So it cures after around 30 minutes. So I did the first pour just to see if I had no leaks because that would be horrible to pour like, um, I think it was around three or 400 grams and just see it dripping all the way onto the floor. So I did the first layers, then you still have some bubbles or some shrinkage. And that's, this is why I use some fillers to fill it. And also like the parts just behind the button because this shape will have like a better uh, reflection of the light coming from the back and also fill it to like a nice uh, and strong piece. So I've just used some spray uh, paint. So it's a spray putty, just sand it in between. I think I, I did three layers, uh, wet sand it in between and I'm just using the clear coat, so the varnish. It's a 1K varnish just to have like the nice and glossy finish at the end. So here we're preparing the silicon mold. So that's an extra step, an extra technique being used. So the silicon mold is, uh, silicon mold is being prepared. I'm just using some um, pore vents and some uh, air vents. So I'm using the additional cure silicon. Uh, you could also use um, a condensation cure silicon. I think it's called like that, uh, but that would wouldn't be transparent. So I wanted to go for this tutorial with a transparent uh, silicon so you can see how it's being poured inside. So I'm using a double cup system right here. 
just to make sure that everything is well mixed because that's probably the most important thing with silicon molds is that everything is well mixed without too much air bubbles into the uh, the casting so i i think like here you can see this is the the gassing of the silicon so make sure you have a big cup so this is a six liters cup for i think two and a half kilograms of silicone and then you just have to like pull full vacuum and just release it till all the bubbles pop and then then you're sure you have a good um, silicon ready for molding so as you can see like maybe something i would do differently is that i'm pouring straight on top and some air bubbles got trapped under the part but that's not really a big deal because i still had in mind to do um like a full color not translucent part till now uh, but later on you'll see i went for a translucent like glass like uh, centerpiece so you can reuse your cups so you can just remove the silicon from the cup and start pouring again for the second uh, pour so i'm using a release in between because otherwise all the silicon will stick to your uh, first pour so that's very important so silicon won't stick to anything else than itself so um, i'm using some red pigments just to be sure to see the two halves so this is not necessary i just think it looked cool and i've chosen for the red because a pokeball is normally white and red so um, just to stay in team so i degassed everything again and then it's poured on top so this pour is the easiest one because all the air can just go up without being trapped under the part so i think for this project around one and a half kilogram was used and uh, i also did another project i'll go into more detail in that other tutorial about making silicon molds because i think it's a really cool thing how you can make from a master you can make different uh, finishes and multiple parts so it's like injection molding but with uh, fast setting resins so here is the look of the the mold so the upper and the bottom piece are nicely matched together and then we're ready to pour the resin so i'm using regular epoxy resin here so it's the infusion resin with a slow hardener make sure that you have a specific resin for this because otherwise if you're pouring such thick parts there's a big chance that your uh, resin will overheat and crack uh, in between so here you can see how it flows i've just added the vent hole on the top of the uh, push button in the front because I've spotted some air bubbles with the first pores so here's the part coming out of the mold I just trimmed the vent holes and I've just added some clear coat on top to give it like that high gloss uh, glass finish so this is the first time I've assembled the pokeball just try it with some light on the inside at the end I didn't do the light because I think it was a bit too difficult and I should have like batteries inside and or a cable and I didn't want to have it uh, on the Pokeball but because I think it's something you, you should be able to hold in your hands. So here are the final steps just before gluing everything together. So I've decided to add some weight on the bottom of the Pokeball so it would always stand into one like one shape so it will always fall on the same side because the weight of the ring in the middle was already weighing quite a lot so I'm using the PU um, fast cast resin again and I added some brass powder in the uh, or some copper powder into the mixture just to add some extra weight because this is a very uh, heavy material so that way it will always fall on its uh, bottom side so here I'm just using a little like ring or mid piece in carbon fiber just to get the uh, stance uh, to avoid it from falling down with the weight of the pokeball because we've already added quite a lot of weight but i like the weight here because it feels like uh, luxurious and it has a really cool effect on uh, on the pokeball so here it's standing uh, so here are the final shots so it took me quite a while to make this so if you like this video uh, don't forget to smash that like button, uh, please share it with your friends and uh, leave a comment down below uh, if you want to or if you have some questions. So thanks for watching and see you guys in the next video.